Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, let's do another question. Um, Math 104 Web Work 11.1. Um, we had this weird thing called the floor function, and at first I thought it was absolute value, as I'm sure many of you did. And then I noticed, oh, shit, they're doing the floor because I got it wrong when I tried it the first time. Oops. Anyway, so let's go through this, how you think about it, and then, uh, yeah, you'll know exactly what's going on. So uh, we're going to have this f at x equals floor, it's called floor of x, and then floor of negative x, and then we're supposed to use this definition of, of f at x to solve the remaining stuff here. So um, the first thing really we need to do is understand how to even calculate floor function on x, you know, and then we can worry about floor function on negative x, and then we'll worry about piecing them together. Um, don't worry if it looks too much all at once, it probably is if it's new to you. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so don't worry about the limit and stuff like that. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with this. The best start is to test a few values of x in the floor function. That's a typo. Um, g of x equals floor of x. Okay, so um, the floor function, what it does is it returns the integer. If you if you look at your number on, on a line, like if you look at, in this case, 1.1 1 .1 on, on the number line, it returns the integer to the left of it, unless it's already an integer, in which case it just returns that integer. So I've drawn up a few, a few examples here. I also, um, I just have a little number line here, so super easy. Um, let's, we, we can put A in a few different spots and then just test what floor of A is gonna be. Okay, so if I drop A there, floor of A, so this is like two point, like almost 2.5, floor of A is two. Okay, if it's actually on two, floor of A is two, again. Okay, so it doesn't go down to one because it's already on an integer. All right, um, floor of one is one, floor of any integer is, is that integer, so floor of negative two is negative two. But something weird happens um, when you're in negative numbers. So it's not weird, it actually makes total sense, but it just maybe isn't totally intuitive to start. Let's look at this, this is like, this is negative 1.5 almost. The floor of negative 1.5, it always goes to the left. It doesn't go closer to zero. The rule is always to the left. So the floor of this number, one, negative 1 negative 1.5, is negative 2. It actually goes down. And even if you're at like, just like, it does not rounding, it's going to the integer below. So even if you're at like negative 2.1 here, the floor is negative 3. Okay, it always, unless you're on an integer, it always goes to the integer to the left on the number line. That's the key, all right? So, um, <clears throat> I did a couple examples for you guys. So like floor 1.1 is 1 because 1 is the integer to the left of 1.1. Floor 3.9 is 3 because blah, blah, blah. Floor of negative 1.1, I showed you that already. We're a little bit to the left of negative 1, so we have to go all the way to negative 2. <coughs> and same thing with D. Um, floor of negative 3.9 is negative 4. Okay, we already looked at my GeoGebra. Um, I don't think I'll include that one in this tutorial because you can, you can make that very, very easily. Now let's just compute. Let's, let's put these into our function f. So our f function, which is the floor of x plus the floor of negative x, and and let's test a few of those values. I feel like we're ready for that now. So let's we'll try f of 2.1 and f of 1.9, and then we'll get some intuition about what's happening when x is near 2. Okay, so let's put an f of 2.1. You get, I'm, I'm just replacing the x's with 2.1s, so it's floor of 2.1 plus floor of negative 2.1. And now I get to individually compute this one and this one. The floor of this one, since 2 is the integer to the left of 2.1, it's 2. Since negative 3 is the integer to the left of negative 2.1, it's negative 3. And then these two together, uh, put this into Wolfram or something. It's really hard calculation, so you're going to need some help for sure. Um, negative 1. Uh, this one here, uh, same thing. Floor 1.9, floor negative 1.9. The integer to the left of this is negative 2. The integer to the left of this is 1. And again, you might have to build a separate computer to compute this one. This one's even bigger calculation than this one. And hire some physicist, Stephen Hawking. Send him a letter, write him a letter, write him a handwritten letter um, to see if you can get help with this calculation. Um, I wrote him a letter and he was able to tell me it's negative one. Okay, so what do you think? What do you think is happening as x approaches two? So you know, you know, try 2.01. What do you think the answer is going to be with 2.01 and with 1.99? Okay, so now we're what hundredths away from two on either side, and then See what happens. Do you generate a different answer, or is it the same answer? Okay, use that to come up with what's going to happen as x approaches two, and then let's let's also see what happens when x is actually equal to two. Okay, when x is the integer two. Well, f of two is floor two, floor negative two, floor of two is two, floor of negative two is negative two because they're on the integer, so you don't move at all. You just return those. That one is zero. 
So uh, that should be good. That should help you figure out what's going to happen with the limit. That's, let's just recap the question. So the limit as x goes to 2, we now know, after you've tested a few of those points, you should know what happens as x is really close to 2 on the left and as x is really close to 2 on the right. You know what happens to this function f at x. Okay? That's the work we did here. That's this work. All right, and then I, I computed this one for you. I gave you that answer. Oh, my God. We're going to get in so much trouble for this one. Um, who cares? So anyways, uh, that's that. Hopefully that helps. And uh, yeah, keep posting on the Facebook group, and uh, I will keep helping you. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday, and we'll talk to you later.